just wash down the drain and get rid of. Just get rid of and just start doing good the best that we can do. We're not perfect. Um, We pray for forgiveness of our, our daily sins. But we know that we have a chance at eternal life. And we want to do the best that's pleasing to our Heavenly Father and the Son. So I thank you for listening and that is it for now this week. And again, go ahead and read Titus chapter 2 verse 11 or the whole book of Titus chapter 2. But just keep your reading up and uh, profess with your mouth that, that Jesus Christ died for our sins so that we could have eternal life. And the only way to the Father is through the Son. The only way... Uh, to the father again is through the son so we must acknowledge that we must know that when we pray we pray to the father but those prayers cannot get to the heavenly father unless they go through Jesus we would not have salvation or not even be able to pray if Jesus had not have given his life as a sacrifice and shed his blood for us because the father is perfect he's almighty and we're flesh and blood we are his creation and he loves us the father gave his very very best for us to us he sacrificed and gave his son so we can give our very very best back to the father we're going to end now in prayer and um, I thank you I thank you for tuning in tune in again next Thursday at 12 o'clock Heavenly Father we come to you Father thanking you today for your lessons your lessons and your blessings we thank you Father for today we thank you for your grace and your glory that you have put upon us We thank you for giving us eternal life and we thank you for sacrificing your son. And we thank you for an awesome son. We thank you for Jesus Christ who willingly, lovingly went ahead and and came down, became, was born uh, flesh and blood and gave his life for us in the end. He came humble and he left humble. And Father God, that just shows us that we need to be humble and maintain humble among ourselves and among doing your will. And we need to spread those seeds more and more to everyone that we can. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that you have allowed us to have inside of us to guide us, to lead us, to help us. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the faith. The faith that you have put in us. We thank you Father for our increased faith. We have a lot. Yes Father. A lot to be thankful for. And we thank you for our very lives. We thank you for waking us up in the morning. We thank you for seeing us through another day. I thank you Father. I come to you and I thank you. And I love you. Thank you for your people. And I pray for everyone sick, everyone ill, everyone afflicted. I pray, Father, for restored health for everyone. I pray that this message here touch the lives of others. And that they're open and ready to receive your words. And not only to receive your words, but also to spread your words and blessing and blessing others. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 26. Man, I tell you, I wish I had time here. Second Chronicles. Balance me. Hallelujah. Let's go over here to, to the book of uh, Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 15. And he made, it's talking about Isaiah. And he made Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towels and up on the bulwarks to shoot 
arrows and with great stones with all. And his name spread far abroad. And he was marvelously helped until he was strong. It's really sad. Get help till you get strong. But in, when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. What was this lifting up? For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altars of incense. Now he was holy. He was holy. This man was, this man was a very holy man. The Bible said he pleased God. He did the things that was right in the sight of God. But he stepped out of his calling. Church, we need to know this. Amaziah the priest went after him. Now a priest that was supposed to offer this thing went after him. And with his four score priests of the Lord and were valid men. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertained not unto the Uzziah to burn incense to the Lord. For this, the priests, the sons of Aaron, they are concentrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, man. Thou hast transgressed. Neither shall it be to thine honor for the Lord God. But Uzziah was wroth and had the censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priest, leprosy rolled upon his forehead. Rose upon his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord. From beside the incense altar. altar. And Uzziah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him. Behold, he was leprous on his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper until the, de to his, the day of his death, and dwelled in a several house, being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jonathan, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. You find Saul, what messed up Saul with his anointing. Two factors he did. Sam, Sam, Samson, Samuel did not come early enough to the sacrifice. Anybody ever read that? Raise your hand up if you read it. Saul was anointed king. He was not anointed prophet or priest. When you're called and chosen, you're chosen for something. That don't mean you can jump up and elevate yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and I want to tell you this. The Bible talks about a high priest. Anybody heard anything about a high priest? Okay, let me explain to you in your layman's terms that you may understand what a high priest is. In biblical days, a high priest is comparable with the bishop. The priest is comparable with the pastor. A pastor in biblical days is a priest. The high priest is a bishop. He's over the priests. He's a high priest. The Bible said no man taketh this on unto himself. No man should make himself a high priest. Nor should any one man make himself a bishop. You can't make yourself a bishop. I didn't make myself a bishop. It says no man take this honor unto himself. But he that is called of God as Aaron was. Then it tells you the criteria must be met to be a bishop. I've seen some people today. Now, I want to let you understand. The pastor of the church is like a priest. The bishop is like a high priest. You brothers that are helping around there and preaching, you are like the Levites. You help in the Sunday school. You're a Levite. You ain't no priest. The preacher used you for the brotherhood. You're a Levite. He used you to help counsel. You're a Levite. You're not a priest. And you're certainly not a high priest. God forbid. And I've got to tell the truth. You're a Levite. And what's the sad thing? Because a priest or a pastor has to be anointed to be a pastor. 
You anoint the pastor. Yes, sir. You take those Levites, you just use them in helping you in the service. Helping them to serve the people, helping them to counsel the people, helping them to... But they're Levites. I've seen recently, well, I've seen some people that was ordained as a priest or a pastor turn around and submit themselves to a Levite as their bishop. How foolish can you be? When you are a priest, you're supposed to teach the Levite. You're supposed to lead the Levite. Show the Levite the right way. Stop the Levite when he's too eager. Know your calling where you are. And stay in your calling. As I close here, I'm going to run through this quickly. Because I want to pray for you. I'm just going to tell you about this. And I want you to follow me as easy as you can. And I want my group to come up. I want to tell you about a man named Saul called to be an apostle when he was called to be an apostle you know Paul was when you read the books of Acts he had, had made havoc of the church you know what that means total ruin annihilation havoc of the church is annihilating something he was just that mean spirited but God needed him needed him just like that for the time being. He needed that tenacity. He needed his ability to speak several languages because he had to go to other nations. He couldn't use one of those Jews that didn't even want to go to another nation. That believed they were holier than the other nations. He had to get somebody that could speak other nations, other languages. He had to, because Paul had been raised in Rome. That's why he knew their language. He knew all about that. He was really a Jew, but his mom took him to for educating him, for training him. She, she took him to a, to the to the into Rome, into Greece, where he was raised to learn all of those things. And God said, "I got to use that man." Now he was wrong. He was on his way to kill Christians, but when he was on his way, he saw the light. I hope somebody in here tonight can see the light. I hope somebody can see the light. When he saw the light shine from heaven in the voice, say, why are you persecuting me? You can see the light if you'll let God's word be your director. Paul was still mean-spirited. On his way, but when God saw him, he said, get up. Go into the street that is called straight. You're going to meet one named Ananias. And he's going to tell you what you ought to do. Paul got up. Got himself up together. Being knocked to the earth. You know why I'm telling you all this? Some of you may have been knocked down. Some of you may have been kicking against the prick for a long time. Some of you got callings in your life that you ain't fulfilled nothing. Some of you knew one time that you were supposed to be what God had you. You had a vision. You had a hope. You ministered. You taught to other people. But you've gone through things. And you fail in some categories. And you've become discouraged. And you've thrown in the towel and feeling that God don't want to use you no more. But I'm here to tell you that if you would get yourself up. If you'd get yourself focused back up on what God called you for. And not allow anything that you've encountered make you back up and throw in the towel. God will give you victory over a past and bring you into the place that he can use you for what his calling was. Paul, as he went into the city, God said, there's coming, he told Ananias, there's coming a man to see you. He said, his name is Saul. Man, Ananias, oh, Saul, I heard about this man. How much evil he's done to your saints. Yes, sir. But the Lord said to him, hey, this man is praying now. Yeah. Prayer makes a difference. Yeah. Humbling yourself on your face makes a difference. Yeah. And this is what we have got to be as a children of God. Let us not look at some of those that I talked with a man today telling me how he had once been saved. And no longer is he at church. 
once was called by God. 